In this video, we will discuss why so many people live paycheck to paycheck and why often the money is not even lasting until the end of the month. We will talk about the reasons first. The financial education of many people is substandard, which leads to the fact that people do not know how to manage money. If the income is also low, the precarious situation is aggravated even further. This shortcoming is exacerbated by the fact that finance and good budgeting are not taught at school. In addition, there are many supposedly useful offers and tips out there. Unfortunately, much of the information is misleading or incorrect. Some so-called informations are just scams. Problematic is that the false information and scams are often not immediately recognizable as such, especially by unsophisticated investors. That's why many people fall for false and bad advice and scams. The financial system is predatory, which leads to the fact that the financially uneducated are exploited and others enrich themselves at their expense. The customer wants to make the best deal possible, such as signing the most favorable loan contract or earning the best return on his investment. These interests often run counter to the interests of the financial advisor who is often called in to advise the customer who is not familiar with the subject. It is often assumed that the advisor behaves in the best interest of the customer and that he is qualified. Sadly, neither of these is often the case. Here in my garage, just bought this uh, new Lamborghini here. It's fun to drive up here in the Hollywood Hills. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. The advisor's goal is not to give the customer the best possible advice, since he is usually paid on a commission basis, meaning that he will often not recommend the best product for the customer, but the one which is getting him the biggest commission. These are usually the worst products for the customer. People often live far beyond their means. They buy expensive stuff they don't need to impress other people who are just as misguided. Often Houses and or apartments are bought or rented but are too big and too expensive for the respective person. A car is purchased that is both too expensive to buy and too expensive to maintain. Also, it often consumes far too much fuel. Unaffordable branded products are purchased and in general no cost and expenditure control is maintained. Mm. Examples are eating out all the time, buying the newest Gucci bag or very expensive sneakers. Going on too many too expensive vacations is another way to keep the balance of your bank account low or even in the negative. The whole situation is exaggerated and worsened when all these expensive consumption is financed on credit. Many will never get out of the debt trap ever again. This will make the credit card company or your bank happy, but it will be devastating for you. As already mentioned, media, advertising and influencers often contribute more to uncertainty and misinformation than to sensible information and education. These are the top five signs you are living beyond your means. First, you are not saving any money. Second, you are unable to pay your bills. Third, your credit score is low. Fourth, you have no emergency fund. Fifth, you are in debt. If you want to start acting financially responsible and get out of the debt trap, 
maybe even build some wealth and start saving when there are two possible starting points. Then the money is not enough and you run out of funds, three weeks into each month you can either start to earn more or you have to stop spending so much. As it's not that easy to earn more and new potential promising income sources are rare, I will now start to give some helpful advice on possible cost savings. Undeniably, there are some habits and hobbies that are very bad for your financial well-being. These include gambling or investing in the crypto market without having a clue. Often people search for shortcuts and get rich quick schemes. But where are usually no shortcuts in life to build wealth? If you invest in such schemes, usually the complete opposite of the intended result will be achieved. Crypto is full of scams and if you don't have the ability to distinguish between genuine projects and Ponzi schemes, don't get involved. It is very important to regularly check and compare your current contracts. For most people, there is enormous potential for savings. Important, I don't want to educate you to be a hardcore frugalist. It's more about identifying big unnecessary costs and then you can decide yourself what you can abandon without a big loss in quality of life. One of the most important categories are utility bills. I would recommend that you regularly check your electricity, gas, internet and cell phone contracts. Often you will find that there is enormous saving potential. Changing your provider often will quickly save several hundred bucks over the course of the year. The same also applies to your insurance policies. Generally, you should only cover those risks that can ruin you. Don't insure small risks. You should never forget that insurance is a for-profit business. The services offered generate a profit for the insurance company. On average. So you pay too much. That's why you should only insure what is sensible. A health insurance, a car insurance and a liability insurance almost always make sense. Most policies that go beyond this usually only cost money unnecessarily and should be cancelled. You should also check your subscriptions regularly. Are there better offers? Do you really need all these? For example, do you really need multiple streaming services like Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney Plus or is just one enough? Do you really still go to the gym or can this subscription perhaps also be cancelled? Do you really read all the magazines or have you just not cancelled out of convenience? Many people say that they waste little or no money at all. This is often miles away from reality. And people are not even necessarily lying. They are simply not aware of the many small money wasters that eat away at their disposable income. That's why I would recommend to any of you to keep book over your household expenses for at least three months. Often the results will surprise you and a lot of savings potential will become apparent. You should also set a budget for the different spending categories such as transportation, groceries or going out. This is very easy, for example with an Excel cheat or with different apps in the Play Store. Another important tip is not to always buy immediately when you have the urge this is especially true for expensive purchases such as the latest iPhone or the new iPad. 
think at least two or three days about the possible purchase and decide only after careful consideration whether you really need the new item. Never ever buy on credit. Very important. If you want something, you should be able to afford it. Consumer debt must always be avoided. Only in the case of investments, it can be worthwhile to take on debt. Examples of this would be starting a company or the purchase of real estate. A big item where you can save a lot of money on are cars. You should never buy a new one because especially in the first three years, these vehicles lose immensely in value. So rather buy a used one and save in the process properly with hardly any sacrifices. If you live in a big city with good public transportation, you might not even need a car at all. And you won't even have too much of a mobility loss in general. You should try to avoid emotional decisions and instead calculate rationally and then decide. Recreational activities and addictions can also burn a lot of money quickly. Do you really have to go to the club every weekend and spend a lot of money on alcohol and entry fees? Or is it possible to reduce these visits or save money in other ways? You could, for example, start drinking with friends at home for a fraction of the cost and then would not need to spend so much money in the club. Smoking is also an extremely expensive hobby slash addiction and your wallet and health will thank you very much if you would manage to quit. Another good rule of thumb comes from Jay-Z who once said, if you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. We will now discuss the other side of the equation, namely increasing your income. Ideally, you should do both, save costs and generate higher earnings. You can increase your income by working more hours, for example overtime. Alternatively, you could also take on a second job. Changing your job more often also leads to a higher average income than staying loyal to one company. Negotiating a wage raise also can increase your disposable income. Investing in your human capital is often one of the most profitable things you can do. Learning, education and training often have immense returns. So if you achieve a higher qualification, you are often paid significantly more than before because your value to the company increases by a lot. I am not talking about some overpriced bullshit courses that fake gurus and influencers want to sell you on the internet. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. Only on my course you get an insane amount of value for your money. Only for a limited short time with massive discount. My business course instead of regular 9999 now for only 499 i am joking obviously not going to sell you any overpriced nonsense like others do you should always have a good bullshit radar and not fall for offers like this of course i'm not talking about courses of the kind mentioned but about real education from institutions like universities, for example. You don't usually become wealthy overnight either. It often takes years or even decades. In the long run, good habits and smart decisions will pay off. To have money left at the end of the month, it is important to form sensible habits and make good decisions. 
Stop wasting your hard-earned cash and spend your money wisely from now on and buy only what you really need or what gives your life a real added value. Stay within your means and never buy what you can't afford. Never take a loan to finance your consume. Invest in your financial education and financial literacy. This does not even necessarily cost money. There are countless good resources on the internet. However, you should be able to distinguish the charlatans from the real experts. It only takes an alert mind. Always be critical and check what is said very carefully. Never blindly trust a random dude on the internet who might be living in his parents' basement. Also, always consult multiple sources before forming an opinion and search specifically for contradictory information. Also, very important, once you have reached the point where you no longer spend your money on nonsense and you have maximized your earnings potential, for example, through education and training, then it becomes important to invest the remaining money smartly. If you just leave the money on your bank account, then the inflation will eat up your money in the long run. You should invest your money wisely in an interest-bearing way instead. Most importantly, before you consider investing your money, you should always pay off your debts and build up an emergency fund. By emergency fund, I mean that you set aside a cushion of something between three and six monthly salaries so that in case of an unexpected and high expense, you have enough reserves built up to be able to pay it from your cash balance. This could, for example, be your car breaking down or a bigger repair at your apartment. As soon as you have set up this safety buffer, you should think about investing. Investing will also be another source of income in addition to your work. This income will be passive as your money will work for you. Investing in the stock market will yield about 10% a year. This number comes from long-term historic stock returns. For me, investing means saving. I don't want to gamble. I want to save smartly for my retirement. This means not putting everything in Shiba Inu or Dogecoin. Crypto is very risky and should be bought with caution. It should only be used as a small addition to your overall portfolio. A contribution of at max 5% to your overall investments seems reasonable. Rather than gambling on the hottest penny stock or with cryptocurrency, you instead want to invest in a globally diversified portfolio of stocks. Index funds and ETFs are the best way to do so. ETFs are very cost efficient. You should definitely stay away from actively managed funds as they have much higher fees with no better performance. On the contrary, the higher fees even lead to lower returns in the long run. Single stocks should also be avoided as these come with concentration or cluster risk. If you buy shares of only one company, you are broke if the company goes insolvent. Sure, the company could also develop brilliantly and you would outperform the market. But who wants to take unnecessary risk when you can achieve the same average return with significant less risk by spreading your investment very widely? In my opinion, you don't need a financial advisor to invest your money. Investing is far less complicated than the financial industry wants you to believe. 
everyone should take their finances into their own hands. Passive investing with index funds and ETFs is far less demanding and time consuming than you think. I have already made a video about this in the past. Click here to learn more. If the video was helpful, don't forget to share the video with your friends and to like and subscribe for more awesome content in the future.